If you've seen my short on this topic, you'll know that as a new player, I recommend leveling characters like these to start off. So, case closed, right? Well, in this longer video, I want to give you some insight on the why and give you an upgrade path guideline that you can use to form your own opinions and educate your decisions. Generally speaking, leveling your character in Arknights does two or three things. Increase their stats, unlock talents and skills, or expands their attack range. So therefore, we want to prioritize units that benefit the most from having more of these things. Now, early game plays out a bit differently than later events because the niche that any one particular unit has is often less important than just filling roles and stat checking enemies. This is why a unit like Melantha is so highly recommended and featured in so many guides. The stats she has at max level are so high compared to her peers at the same investment, and so she fills the role of 1v1 me bro very well. Alright, so with the baseline reasoning out of the way, let's review our selections. So, here the reason we are choosing Fang over Vanilla is really just down to what we are using our vanguards for. We're just trying to stall those initial few enemies whilst waiting for enough DP to place down the goods. Fang has a shorter skill cycle thanks to that instant, automatic activation. In case you don't know, whenever you see this orange bar underneath a unit's skill, that means they are in a state known as SP Lockout and cannot regain points towards their next skill activation. Even though Fang requires more SP than Vanilla to trigger her skill, her skill cycle is actually 5 seconds shorter thanks to not having the orange bar. Add on to this the auto activation means you won't have to worry about wasting up time because you got distracted by Mudrock's uh, hammer. As for our second vanguard choice, because we really should have two, Plume is a killer unit. Literally, we want her killing as many enemies as possible because she gives you DP for every unit she kills. Now, she can only block one unit at a time, but thanks to her higher attack and attack speed, we can bonk one enemy before their friend shows up, or just, I don't know, place another unit behind her. We've already covered Melantha briefly, and she is my number one pick here, so let's take this opportunity to talk about resistances in Arknights and why they make Melantha so good. At a base level, operators will do one of two types of damage, physical or arts. Each of these has their own damage mitigation stat that both your operators and enemies use, those being defense and resistance. Now, defense and resistance are not cut from the same cloth. Defense is a flat number reduction, whereas resistance is a percentage-based reduction. Here's an example. If an enemy has 100 defense and my operator does 200 physical damage per attack, that enemy takes 100 damage per attack. Simple. If an enemy had 100 resistance, however, it wouldn't matter how much art damage my operator does per attack as the damage will be reduced by 100%. Resist is just built diff. Now, how does this make Melantha good? Well, let's look at one of the tougher early bosses, W. W has 10,000 HP, 100 defense, and 50 resist. That's not a lot of defense, but that is a lot of resist. Straight away, we know our casters are not going to be effective here. Now, let's take Cruz another unit which will be getting a big thumbs up from me later in this video, and compare the stats. Cruz has 446 attack with an attack interval of 1 second. Melantha has an attack of 828 with a 1.5 second interval. Before factoring in defense, here are their raw DPS numbers. Without factoring in skills, it doesn't look like Melantha is that far ahead, right? Well, what happens if we apply that flat minus 100 per hit from the defense of W? Well, we go to 346 DPS for Cruz, 480 DPS for Melantha. The thing to look at here is their DPS as a percentage of each other. 
Without defense, Malantha is doing 22% more DPS than Cruz. However, when we do factor in that defense, she's now doing 38% more DPS, and this gap will only widen as the enemies gain more defense. But Voss, what if the enemy has higher defense than my unit's attack? Don't worry, there's a minimum amount of damage that any unit can do with their attack, which is 5%. Hmm. That was a long tangent and a lot of numbers. Let's just relax for a bit and listen to some music. Both Midnight and Poppycart are good enough to build, but in my opinion, neither are essential and can be safely skipped until we need them for integrated strategies. If I had to give the edge to one, it'd be Midnight, as he has the ability to switch to Arts damage and his 4-star contemporaries either suck or have more niche applications. Poppycart, whilst solid, is unable to make it to that E2 promotion and thus is stuck at 2 max of block count, which sucks for her archetype. So what, we're stuck with just one guard? Well, not exactly. Our guard options actually get quite a big upgrade going to 4 stars, so we'll cover those in the all stars section. Them, break the system. Some results may vary. Situation scary, but she's never worried. Picture that. Even when it's bad, she still get a bad fighting through the Well, since we talked about Cruz, we might as well move on to the sniper recommendations. Seeing as the goal with our sniper ops is to put out fast, consistent damage, Cruz really stands out from the crowd. Her DPS eclipses that of Ignachiel, and Catapult is. <laughs> Doing something different altogether. For the sake of not making this video the length of the average therapy session, I won't do a breakdown between these three, I will just leave it at use Cruz for now. Three star defenders are unique in the sense that they all suck. No, seriously, my actual recommendation here is to use Norcorn and then skip directly to either Quora or Gummy. Protectors like Beagle are an early game staple, but Quora is the Melantha of defenders thanks to her talent and skill too. Likewise, Guardian defenders never go out of fashion. N no, seriously, why is Saria still meta? But Spot has the bad type of Guardian defender skill. We like the type that can effectively replace a medic rather than the panic button type, hence Gummy, which is pretty convenient actually because you can get her for just a dollar from the store. Huh. We'll come back to this. So, casters is where things get a bit more interesting, in the sense that the overlap between good early and good later is a bit wonky. Lava is a really good caster early because stalling with defenders and medics and getting max value out of a splash caster is a very viable strategy. And you know what? I do genuinely recommend building Lava. Unfortunately, she isn't going to be used much beyond story stages. Uh, but I think that's worth the trade-off for how effective she can be early and the relatively low cost to build. As for Steward, I'd leave him on the bench for now. Whilst his unique targeting priority can be very helpful, there's another single target caster we'd rather be investing in, which is Amir. Amir is given to every player for free and is very unique amongst the roster. She has a unique Elite 1 splash art, which no other unit gets and much later on gets access to a unique feature which makes her super useful in integrated strategies. I won't spoil any of that just yet, but Amir fulfills the use case of a single target caster early and scales very well as we continue to clear through the story, thus making her the only 5 star recommendation in this video.
for medics, we get two three-star options, Hibiscus and Anzal. Now, when I started out, I was so averse to building Twinks that I forgot to do basic math. As you can see from the numbers on screen, whilst Hibiscus does outheal Anzal, barely, when it comes to single target, once we factor in the 21% chance for Anzal to heal an additional unit, we can see that he quickly becomes the better option, not to mention that extra range for those edge case scenarios. Now, with that being said, I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea to raise both, but if you're only looking for one three-star healer to invest in, it should definitely be Anzal. This is an easy category to go over. There's only one 3 star supporter and Orchid is definitely worth building. As the only 3 star supporter she will automatically get picked up once we start getting into integrated strategies and early on there are some sections basically built around pairing her with a caster. Doing so will make those stages a breeze and her unique range compared to our other ranged options certainly makes her worth the cash and tickets. Specialists on the other hand kind of sit out here as there isn't a single 3 star specialist in the game. With that being said, there are two 4 star specialists that are definitely worth your time early as they can function on very low resources. First up, we have Shaw. The game gives you Shaw as part of the main story and proceeds to then build an entire episode around her. Eventually, you'll want to push it anyway for certain late game stages and the nice thing about them is we don't really care about their combat stats. All we're really looking for is the push they give us to be as strong as possible, and for our purposes, this means raising Shaw to a massive level 45. That's it, we're stopping there. We only raise her this high, so we have the baseline stats for her not to get one shot. See, if we look at her skill, we find that raising it from skill level 3 to 4 changes the pushing power from small force to medium force, and this lets us push enemies up to a weight class of 1, the maximum distance. To get the next level of pushing force, we would have to go all the way to Mastery 3, which we don't get access to for a long time, and further ranks from 4 to 7 only give us extra damage, which we don't need when the whole purpose is just to one-shot enemies. Finally, we have Gravel. Gravel is our resident <laughs> button. She drops down, takes an ass whooping, and then dips. Her refractory period is very low thanks to the fact that she's an executor specialist, which reduces her redeployment time down to 15 seconds, so we can have her stall all day. Now, she definitely does scale well with higher investment, however, we can get everything we need out of her at E1 level 1 skill rank 7. Alright, so we've covered our recommendations for your initial roster based on the 3 stars the game gives you. If you don't have a 3 star on this list, just keep doing recruitment, I promise you'll have the max potential soon. If you've been following these recommendations to the letter, then your squad should look something like this. Now, you'll notice we have an empty slot on the roster, and well, these two ops are more situational than universally applicable, so that begs the question, where do we go from here? Well, now it's time to get into our All-Stars. These are exceptional 4-star units that rise above the rest and can make a significant contribution to our team moving forward into the late game. Plus, because they can be promoted to E2 on the cheap, unlike our 3-star picks which max out at E155, they enable us to get the most out of our support units. So, it's important to pick at least one of these to prioritise more so than the rest of your squad. So, I'm going to start this with a hot take. I don't actually think you should raise Myrtle, at least, at least not early on. Now wait, before you get your pitchforks and torches out, let me explain why. First up, Myrtle is a game warping unit. Quite literally all new events and stages have to take Myrtle into account because of just how busted she is. Her usage stats are insanely high amongst the community whenever the numbers are publicly released, regardless of the event. Really though, this all started five months after Myrtle's original release when Bagpipe dropped. Bagpipe's talent gives all vanguards an additional 8 skill points on deployment just for being in the squad. Myrtle's first skill at Mastery 3 
can be instantly activated with this talent in full effect, meaning you start the stage with an extra 6 DP and a unit on field. Then, 22 seconds later, you get another 14 DP. Here are the numbers compared to our Fang. So if she's so busted, why am I saying not to raise her early? Well, this is down to the resources we have available. What I just showed you is the best case scenario that requires us to have a specific 6 star operator with 4 additional copies and have Myrtle herself at Elite 2 so we can get her to skill mastery 3 plus all the material costs associated with that. If we compare her to our equally invested Fang, who we will almost certainly have max potential and cost less to get to this point, we find that we end up with what you see on your screen now. When we take a look here at the stats at the same level, we see Fang is a little bit tankier, but Myrtle does a bit more damage. Okay, seems pretty minimal. But what if we look at the DP generation? Myrtle outshines Fang even at this skill level, so what gives? Well, here's the thing we haven't mentioned yet. Myrtle has a block count of 1, reduced to 0 when using her skill. Meanwhile, Fang will be there chugging away. The thing is, all this extra DP that Myrtle is putting out isn't powering us up to some crazy 6 star that's going to solo the map, and we're losing that early game stability provided to us by other vanguards. Now, obviously she's not a terrible choice, she is still on this list and you will almost certainly build her eventually, I just think she's overhyped as an early game unit and we can afford to have some fun with other options. Alright, that was a hot one, so let's take a nice easy recommendation for the next unit. Perfuma is the lowest investment multi-target healer that we have access to. These AoE medics are great for being able to sustain our ops from constant damage like the mists we encounter here or things like splash damage from enemy casters. Perfuma especially doubles up here by providing passive HP restore globally whilst on field, allowing her to boost up even our lonely ops and gives us a bit more freedom with our placement. Also, if we ever decide to play around with summoners, they can't be healed by normal means, but Perfuma's global regen works just fine. On the topic of medics, Sussiru here is a straight upgrade from Hibiscus with equal investment on skill 1. Her numbers are just bigger. What she has that Hibiscus doesn't is an absolutely busted skill 2. Low SP cost, big HPS, insane cycle, what's not to love? Now it's important to note that this skill can only be used twice per battle, However, I'd argue if you need this more than twice per battle, maybe we should be looking at making some other changes to the roster. She also has a really sexy beach skin. FBI, open up! So, I wasn't exactly sure which of these two incredibly solid snipers I wanted to recommend next to Cruz. They both have that amazing low SP cost, attack recovery, attack enhancing skill that we'd like. May's skill gives us an 80% slow for 2 seconds, whilst Meteor provides a 30% defense shred. Each shine in their own respective situation, and both are equally usable in general content. Based on personal experience, I'd give the edge to May, specifically because of these guys who can't be blocked, but let me know which you decide to go with in the comments. Cutter is a unit I was so hyped to pull when she released. I thought her design looked sick, and her kit looked interesting, and as it turns out, I was right. Her skill 1 is a fast charging nuke best used on single targets, and her skill 2 is an AoE slaughter that does double damage to aerial enemies. Oh yeah, both skills hit drones by the way. The usual weakness of her class getting gutted by high defense enemies is circumvented by the fact that her abilities have multiplicative attack scaling, and she has those skills available constantly. Very well designed guard with 2 block that can absolutely carry us through those early stages, Cutter is my personal number one pick on this list. Quora and Gummy both punch well above this star level. Right now, the only meaningful difference in 99% of content between Quora and Hoshiguma is that Hoshi has reflect damage on her skill 2, which is useful for events where the enemies are cowards. Quora's skill 2 is where it's all at, basically doubling her defense, giving her extra block count, which is a lot more useful than it initially seems, and giving her passive health regen makes her one amazingly tanky girl. The fact that she stops attacking is even a plus side in some cases, as you can use her to hold certain enemies that get triggered when they take damage. As we're not building a 3 star defender, I'd personally put Quora high on the priority list, much like our next op, Gummy. 
Now, I could give you a full rundown on why Gummy is so good, but the biggest gummy merchant on the planet has already done a far better job of that than I could ever do, so here's a brief summary. Her stats are about what we would expect from her class and star rank, and she has the good Guardian Defender skill that we want. What really sets her apart, however, is that stun chance, which really aids her survivability against enemies with huge attack, but a slow attack interval. Speaking of stuns, Click is a mech accord caster worthy of a spot on this list. While her attack may not look like much, it's worth remembering that her drone attacks the same target and does more damage than Click herself, so this number is actually a lot higher. Plus, she also has a lower attack interval than standard casters, which will become relevant when we discuss her second skill. This skill gives us some extra damage and allows our drone to follow the enemy all the way to the blue box, but the real benefit here is that stun chance. Much like with Gummy, the occasional stun on the right target can make a huge difference in terms of survivability and help us with those pesky unblockable units. She's a bit lower priority for me personally compared to some other units on this list, but certainly a worthy inclusion. There's a very small part of me that doesn't want to recommend m Moose? Mouse? It's spelled Moose, but everyone calls her Mouse. What are we doing? Anyway, because we get access to another arts guard later in the story that is uh, leveled for free? I don't want to spoil anything. Um, anyway, I'm still recommending Moose because we don't get access to that other arts fighter for a long time. And even when we do, Moose is still a good pickup in integrated strategies with her first skill providing an attack debuff that lets her solo hold lanes a lot more effectively than you'd expect. Once we get to the later stages of the game, we can even invest enough to make that attack debuff a target permanently. Also, dealing double damage a quarter of the time is pretty good, I guess. Don't fuck with this guy. No, but seriously, this kid is a menace. You really gotta be careful about that DP drain, but his low cost to build, put next to the insane damage and healing he can do, 100% makes him worthy of this spot. He's mountain at home if mountain stopped you from getting mugged and then asked for your wallet as payment. If you haven't heard of Blue Woman, no, not that one I meant, Wet Blue Woman? Better. If you haven't heard of Blue Woman yet, don't worry, you will. But in the meantime, you can use Pinecone. Pinecone has a very small but potent no-no zone that can absolutely shred enemies and your wrists as you keep manually activating her skill. Absolutely worth it though, as the defense ignore makes her do a gazillion damage to whatever she's hitting, and it's true AoE. There is no max enemy limit here. Speaking of true AoE, that brings us to our final unit here, Ethan. This funny looking guy is attainable from the store, which means that we are extra guaranteed to get him and his potentials. Ethan puts out a lot of damage for his rarity thanks to his true AoE in a massive auto attack range mixed with his first skill which passively gives him Art Burn. He also has a chance to bind on his talent which means if you wish really hard you might be able to feel like you've actually accomplished something. Well, that's it. That's pretty much everyone I'd recommend for you to build under 5 stars. Honestly, you won't need anyone else in order to clear Act 1, and even if you did, we can always grab a support unit. But Voss, what about this sick new 6 star unit I pulled? The tier list I saw on Game Press says they busted! You know what? They probably are at E2, level 90, M9, pot 6, all skills unlocked after a blowjob. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. If you think you'll get the most enjoyment from leveling Siege, for example, then go ahead. You're not going to doom your account, it's fine. Just remember to level your units somewhat evenly and try not to build more than one higher rarity unit for now. We'll be more than capable of getting a full squad of bangers shortly. This video serves to give you recommendations on how to fill the holes in your squad and optimize your start, not tell you exactly how to play the game. Like and sub, thanks.